hanging out. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I want to ask you is that when you started your music career, what was like, at what age did your spark ignite for music? So my spark ignited for music probably, I mean, my own music started in high school. I feel like my mom was always singing and my mom's parents, my grandparents. So I was around it as a young kid. But then in high school, I, um, I noticed that my dad had this old guitar in the corner of our house and I was really stressed and overwhelmed with school. And so um, I just asked him one day, like, hey, can I uh, learn how to play this? And that sort of became my nightly routine after school, after those long days, I just started um, learning how to play guitar. Uh, so I learned on YouTube, like how to play the E minor chord and then from there, I, um, I just kept learning. And then I started having a lot of really deep feelings. And I was like, what do I do with this? And they found their way into songs. That is actually really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the first song that you learned to play on the guitar? I actually do. I was just um, telling some friends the story last night because it was The Best Day by Taylor Swift. And um, I was thinking about that just because, you know, she announced Fearless, the, her version of Fearless coming out in April. And I just um, was thinking like, oh, a song on the album was the first song I ever learned to play, so. <laughs> you recently put out a new single. Was there an inspiration behind it? And if so, can you explain? Yeah, so there were a couple things um, that kind of went into the making of this song. Uh, the first thing was an experience I had in college where um, the Harvard men's soccer team had this group chat um, for members of the women's soccer team where they sort of said really terrible things about these women and then they rated them. They gave them an actual numerical rating on the way that they looked. And that was really hard for me to observe, um, in part because I'm a woman and that just felt, um, it just felt like very near and dear to my heart. But then also, and more importantly, I just saw my friends going through some of those women were my friends. And so I wrote down the lyric that is in the song now, maybe I'm worth more than some numbers or a score. And I wrote it down um, just in a journal and always had it and sort of always knew I wanted to write a song um, about that. And then as I was just kind of on the road and meeting new folks and meeting fans, I just saw how much I was connecting through everyone, connecting to everyone through the internet. And I'm so grateful for that. But then spending time on the internet, you start to notice, you know, how it can begin to shape you as a person and how you feel about yourself and the way you look. And I kind of was reminded as I was posting selfies and just being a person on the internet, I was like, oh my goodness, this kind of feels like I'm asking people to give my a rating, <laughs> you know, for my physical appearance or my achievements or whatever. And I just sort of thought about how that's fine. That's a way that's, you know, it's a way to communicate. It's a way to um, connect nowadays. And so I don't think it in and of itself is wrong. But I think the way that we think about it is really important. And so I wanted to write a song just kind of about that conversation saying, hey, you know, let's know that our beauty, our true beauty is not found in um, our image or the way that people perceive the way we look, um, but it's really about who we are. And so um, I kind of related on this topic to a friend of mine um, who's a fellow songwriter and her and I sat down and one day and, and wrote the songs. That is a really interesting story. Thank you. The song came out great. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> that means a lot. Have you reached your biggest goal in your career yet? <sighs> That's a really good question. I would say yes, in some ways. Like, 
if I, for some reason, woke up tomorrow and couldn't have a music career for whatever reason, I feel very grateful and proud of what I've done um, in terms of like, I've gotten to connect with you guys and, and just I've gotten to connect with so many people through the music that I've made. And I think at the end of the day, that's my number one goal is to just be able to connect with people and hopefully help people through my music because that's what music has been for me. It's been a, a place where I've gone to seek direction and help and um, it's a place where I've gone to feel understood. So if I've done that in any way and I feel like I've just been able to connect, you know, then I'm good. But I also have the sort of like big ambition and goals of like, um, it's a silly goal, but I, I mean, it's not silly, but I would love to win a Grammy or something of that, you know, like I am <laughs> going for that kind of thing in my life and in my career. So for me, as long as I'm able to have a career like this, I'll constantly be going for those goals like that. Or I think even more than a Grammy, if I could play an arena slash stadium someday and like be the reason why <laughs> everyone's at the, the stadium, that would be, that would be one of my bigger ambitions. I feel like your first goal with like touching people with music, I feel like you've already accomplished that. Thank you. Because there's some songs on that you have that are like super inspiring to others. And I feel like that just has an impact on other people without you even noticing that. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And yeah, I mean, that's why that's why we listen to music, right? Like, we just yep. want to feel understood. And so that's good. Out of all the performances that you've done, have you do you have a favorite? Oh, do I have a favorite? You know, I do have a favorite. And it's a funny, it's a funny one. So I um, had come off the road in 2019 and I really wanted to um, find a way to get back on the road kind of as soon as possible. But whenever you plan a tour, it's always just kind of a lot of um, different pieces and I didn't feel fully prepared to um, to kind of do a full scale tour. But I noticed in my schedule that I was um, traveling through Denver one, one day and I knew that um, I had a lot of fans in Denver. And so I just thought, you know what, what if I like post on my socials, call this coffee shop and ask if I could like play in their, you know, in the, in the shop. Um, this was pre COVID of course. And um, so I called the coffee shop and I, put it out on social media and I had around 50 um, fans come to this that coffee so shop cool. kind of at a random time. And I think, you know, I'm a new artist. I'm still growing. And I think it was just really exciting to, um, to feel the support and also just to connect and do something sort of off the cuff like that. And um, I'm hoping that in the future, that's, that's um, something that I continue to do is, definitely do full scale shows and but also kind of do maybe some more spontaneous things as well spontaneous things are really like fun to do because you just do it in the moment yes and I feel like especially after you know once we continue to sort of um heal as a world from from COVID I feel like we've we've sort of lost a little bit of that spontaneity just because we're trying to be safe and I think it's really good that we're being safe mm -hmm. but I'm excited for the time where we can just sort of go into a coffee shop or just do something you know kind of off the cuff <laughs> so since we were talking since you brought up a little bit about like the virus being in lockdown has it impacted your career in a good way or a bad way that's a really good question I think it, it's it's in the short term impacted my career in a bad way in the sense of I can't be out on the road, you know, um, I can't be meeting people sort of in person, which I think for me personally is my favorite thing to do and just how I really connect with anyone. Um, it's just in person. So I think that's been really hard and really sad. But I think that is temporary. And I think the, the long it's been really good for me in the long term, because I have had a lot of time to think about 
songs and write. I've had time to, to write songs and um, have a bunch of new music that I wrote kind of before the pandemic that's coming out this year. But I am really excited to, <laughs> at some point, release my pandemic music because um, it's been actually really fun to write and I've had time to sort of learn how to um, even produce a little bit and, you know, produce my own vocal. And I think um, I'm just really excited to sort of share with everyone, you know, what's come out of this time. So because of COVID and you having to produce your own music, has it given you writer's block or do you just have ideas constantly coming through your head? So I would say that I actually had for the first five months of the pandemic full on writer's block. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why that was. I think it's more of my personality. I really thrive in sort of being out and about and gaining, you know, just sort of like experiencing the world through being out outside. I am definitely not a homebody. So when I'm like home all the time, I just feel very like antsy. And I don't think that's a really good recipe for, for writing. Um, but I really sat with that and thought, you know what, I don't want to have that. I don't want this to be my response to being home. I want to be, be very comfortable with being home. And so I just kind of researched tools to, to get through writer's block and talk to a few of my friends who are fellow writers. And, and then I think kind of from November to now, the floodgates have started opening and I'm, I'm just writing all the time. And um, I just have a lot of ideas and that's been really, really fun. And I think the shift really was, sounds sort of cheesy, but really just believing in the creative process and believing that as humans, we're creative beings, like regardless of whether you think you're creative or not, you are. We create things in our lives all the time. And so I've had to tell myself that and affirm like, Bryn, the creativity is always present in you because you're, you know, a beautiful human. And that's just what it means to be human. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's been a journey. For your writing process, what's like the most where does most of the inspiration come from? It's a combination of my life experience and then sort of things that I read about um, that kind of match up to that life experience. Um, I'm a big nerd, so I love to read philosophy. I love to read novels. And I just think there's a lot of um, sort of, inspiration for music in the in literature so um, I have an EP coming out this year and uh, when I started the EP I was reading uh, Soren Kierkegaard he's one of my favorite philosophers and he's an existentialist philosopher and um, he says um, the most common form of despair is not being who you really are and so I just feel that in my life, like I'm such a people pleaser and I, I'm a performer, right? And so I want everyone to like what I'm doing. I want people to like me. And I think that's just been something that I've really struggled with because in life you can't make everyone happy and you do have to make you know, decisions for yourself about who you are. And um, even if that's like offensive to, to people or if that makes people upset or people don't like it, you know? Um, so I wanted to write a whole EP just about that. <laughs> and Tell Me I'm Pretty is kind of the first, um, the first song in that, um, kind of dealing with the internet, but all the other songs sort of answer it in a new way. And I think, you know, that just kind of shows my process of like, I was feeling all these things in my life. Um, and then I connected it back to something in literature. So not every song is from literature, but I think it's just a big part of the way that I find inspiration for my music. So for this EP that you have coming out, is all the music going to be the same style as your recent single? I would actually say no. <laughs> it's a little bit different. So I chose Tell Me I'm Pretty as the first song uh, that I wanted to release because 
I felt like it sonically bridged the gap between my former EP, my first EP, uh, Time of Our Lives, and this next project. Um, you start, you kind of hear elements of the forthcoming EP in Tell Me I'm Pretty, but it's a little bit subtle. But I think you also get that sort of like anthemic um, vibe that was happening in Might Not Like Me and in Time of Our Lives. So um, it really is a song that bridges the two worlds and, and shows like this is coming from the same person. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit more of a um, live instrumental vibe happening in the new EP. I would still categorize it as pop music. It definitely has pop melodies and pop sensibility. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit more musician-y and that was important to me because when I play live, I play instruments. And so I want to reflect that in the production. I had saw you live when you opened for Why Don't We? back in the A Letters tour. Which city? I was at the LA show. Oh, amazing. I love that. Are you in California? Yes. Yay, we're both in California. That's awesome. <laughs> so so being on tour with Why Don't We, did you take something away from that? And what was the hardest part of being on tour? Oh my goodness. Such a good question. I would say... Oh my goodness. I think... Touring with Why Don't We, I was, I was playing in front of the biggest audience I had ever played in front of before, um, kind of every night. And I think it just sort of opened me up to the possibilities of what being a live performer can, can be. And I think seeing the Why Don't We boys just work so hard and put so much thought and intention behind their live performance was really inspiring to me. So... I think I'll take that with me in, in future tours. And, um, and then I think the hardest part always about being on tour is you just miss your, your friends and your family and you miss kind of having a more domestic life. Like, you know, it's just, it's a weird form of existence. I actually really love it. I think it's really fun. But I think the longer tour goes on, it can start to wear on you and you just feel like, I just want to hug my mom or my best friend. And, um, yeah. Was that the first time that you had toured or have you toured before? I have actually toured quite a bit. So um, I started touring when I was 19 um, and I, you know, it's a big part of sort of my story as an, as deciding to, try to be an artist because at first I was like writing songs and I thought maybe I'll just be a songwriter because I really love writing songs and I know that that's like an actual job that you can have um and I had never gone on tour before so I actually randomly got a tour as I was sort of working with um, a producer I got connected uh, to a tour and after that first week it was just me and my guitar and I was opening for this guy and, and this was in 2014 and uh, I just thought I have to do this I have to do this with my life you know like performing really is one of the most exciting things because it's when you get to really share your music with others and um and I sort of knew okay I can't just be a songwriter I have to pursue being on the road so from then on I just took every opportunity I possibly could to tour um, and I opened for um, Alanis Morissette and I opened for Brandi Carlisle and I opened for um, Parachute and Switchfoot and um, at that time I was sort of making I was making music that was a little bit different than pop music. It was sort of more like a rocky folk pop vibe. Um, and then my EP, my first EP with the, with my label Atlantic um, really was my intro into pop. So Why Don't We was definitely my very first proper pop tour and it was awesome. <laughs> so from releasing several EPs, do you plan on releasing an album in the future? Mm, I do plan on releasing an album. 
future. <laughs> uh, I, I plan on that very, very, very firmly. Um, I, when I release an album, I want it to be perfect and I don't want to be a perfectionist. I think there's a difference between desiring it just to be like totally me and totally right. So I think I sort of, when I was writing this music for the EP, I was wondering if it was an album or if it was an EP. And I think it was an EP because it's sort of a, there were five songs that really stuck out as like, this is a project. And so um, I think it'll be a good sort of jumping off point for an album in the future, but I am already planning <laughs> what the album looks like. Uh, and I'm excited to, to, to start that journey. So when you started music, if you didn't get, if your music career didn't take off, did you have a sec second plan? <laughs> um, I actually, I've had this conversation with um, the president of my label. I ran into her um, one day and she was having a meeting and we were talking and she was like, someone asked me this question of like, did you, did you have a plan B? And she was like, Bryn doesn't have any plan Bs. This is it. <laughs> And I think at the heart of it, I really don't. This is really what I want to do. Um, but I didn't always know that. I didn't always know that this would be my life. Um, and so I thought, you know, going into college, I, I was like, I want to do something in the sort of humanities, arts world. Um, I really love questions. So I studied philosophy and I thought, you know, maybe, you know, what do you do with a philosophy degree? I think there's a lot you can do with it, but the sort of thought is become a philosophy professor. Um, and I don't know why I thought that was just sort of like an easy thing. Actually, looking back now, that's actually really, really hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think kind of pre, pre music career, it was, it was something in teaching or, you know, teaching the humanities. I really love connecting with people. And so I think it's, it's kind of interesting to see how, uh, not that like when I play songs I'm teaching, but it is just all about kind of connecting. When performing, do you have a must perform song from like any of your music? Most perform song? Yeah, I would say it's probably might not like me because I was performing that. Um, I started performing that song back in, oh goodness, I think 2016, because I wrote it in 2016. So basically- When did you release it? I released it in 2016. Um, so, it was kind of out in the world and that's kind of sort of how I got signed by um, record label was someone um, heard it at a, at a party and uh, they shazammed it. And uh, that kind of started the world of talking to record labels. But um, yeah, I would say I started performing it then because I was going on tour. So yeah, it's, it's been a long time, but I still love, performing it every every chance I get. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind that song? So My Not Like Me uh, was a song that came from a relationship I had in college uh, that sort of ignited this fire in me of, of kind of what we were talking about earlier of if someone maybe um, doesn't like me or is intimidated by me you know, I don't have to kind of own that. I can be myself and not worry about whether they like me or not. Um, that's sort of how I was feeling in this relationship. And then I was just thinking about women and history kind of in general, because I was in a class um, in the history of philosophy that talked about women, um, women philosophers. And there were a few women in England in the 1600s who decided that they were going to write their own philosophy and they were going to talk about it. And that's not a thing that women did <laughs> at that time. And so I was sort of really inspired by them to just see their strength coming through their work of like, I don't care that this is a thing that 
women do, or I don't, you know, I want to just do philosophy. They had a real passion and a real love. And it was really inspiring to me, especially in the moment post breakup where I felt like, you know, I couldn't fully be myself in the relationship, but then was able to sort of move through that. And the song came because of that. So because you wrote that song, did that like reason why you wrote it, it inspire the the reasons why you wrote all the other songs on that EP? Yeah, actually, it's a bit different than this, this upcoming EP. The time of our lives was really a snapshot of my life at college. So um, there were sort of a lot of different experience. I think, you know, the, the title of the EP is Time of Our Lives. And I really did have the time of my life in college, particularly because um, I found some of my very best friends in the whole wide world <laughs> uh, there. And so a lot of the songs are about those friendships and just how much joy um, I experienced through them. So that's what Time of Our Lives is about. It's just sort of experiencing um, just the feeling of being young and, and, you know, looking at your life and seeing how there's all this endless opportunity and seeing how that's true of your of your friends as well and sort of being excited about that and um, miss you <laughs> was a song that I wrote kind of about being on the road during the summers and missing my friends at school and missing you know being with them and um, the internet you is a song about <laughs> um, just seeing how college kids interacted on social media and you know I write a lot about the internet as we know uh with Tell Me I'm Pretty as well but that was just kind of like how yeah internet the internet can be a place where we sort of hide even though it seems like we're you know always uh on it and showing ourselves um and then Tongue Tied was um was a love song that I wrote because I think you know, college for me was the first time I'd ever really been in a real relationship and I was sort of feeling those feelings. So each song is kind of a snapshot of, of that time. And it's cool for me to look back on that and listen to it and just, it takes me right back to that time. So when writing that EP, was there like a music style that you were like focusing on from like a music artist? Yeah, I was really inspired by Lord, <laughs> um, her production, and I wanted to sort of um, do my version of Lord. So I wanted it to be very like pop sensible and have the sort of like pop beats and elements going on, um, with also sort of a sensibility of um, kind of live instrumentation that I love because I love playing live so like tongue tied for example is just me and the piano um and there's some more live elements going on <clears throat> in might not like me in time of our lives but then there's some really kind of heavy pop production things happening as well so I you know I I was just really inspired by Lord in the pop space to kind of she made it her own and I sat down you know, writing that EP, thinking, how can I make pop music my own? So you wrote that EP in 2017? Yeah, I kind of wrote it over the course of college. So some of the songs were written in 2015, and some of them were completed kind of 27, late 2017. So it really was a three-year process. What was the hardest song to write? Oh, that's a really good question. What was the hardest song to write? Honestly, I think it was probably Time of Our Lives. Um, all of the songs, though, I think we wrote pretty quickly, which was so fun because um, that doesn't always happen. But Might Not Like Me was we wrote it in minutes <laughs> um and then um tongue tied was also really fast i think it was probably internet you and and time of our lives where we sort of had to crack um some codes i remember you know internet you had like a very different verse vibe happening 
and we wrote it and it, we were just kind of thinking about um the idea i wrote it with my friend nathan chapman out of um out of nashville and i think we we had one day where we wrote like the chorus and we were unsure about the verses and then we slept on it came back the next day and then wrote the verses so but yeah compared to um songs that i've written now like tell me i'm pretty took months <laughs> we had um we had the chorus and the verses you know came over a series of sessions so when I look back on that first EP, I'm like, wow, actually that was really, we wrote it really quick, really quickly. <laughs> All the songs that you've produced have came out like amazing so far. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and so when you film music videos, do you, did you have a favorite? Oh, yes. I mean, I have to say, Tell Me I'm Pretty is my favorite. I, um... You know, with my previous music videos, I sort of um, didn't have any very specific ideas. I knew I wanted what world I wanted it to be in, um, but I really sort of um, put it out there to sort of directors and everything for them to come up with ideas. And I really love the two music videos I have out prior to this one. But this one, I knew exactly <laughs> what I wanted and what I wanted it to say and what I wanted it to show and uh and it was just really exciting to go through that process of having very specific ideas um I just really wanted to connect the song to a historical lens and um and so getting to plan you know how um if you watch the video you can see how in the beginning I'm wearing the corset and I'm wearing like period piece things but I wanted there to be sort of progression um, from the old to the new and so you can kind of see that happening and it was just really fun to plan all of that and just think about ways to do that artfully and um, so and I got to wear like a period outfit which is <laughs> I think always a dream of mine <laughs> kind of beneath the surface so. Where did you pull the inspiration for the music video from? So I, I just love watching period pieces in general. So if there's a, a period drama out there, um, like a Jane Austen novel film or adaption, I've watched it and I have opinions about it. Um, so I drew a lot of inspiration from that. Actually, the corset moment was really inspired by that scene in The Pirates of the Caribbean, um, where Keira Knightley's character is like being done up in the corset and you know it's kind of a comment on you know how there's always been these sort of beauty standards that are very much impossible and terrible and um so I wanted to kind of bring that in and um and then um yeah I would, I would say that's honestly like the main source of inspiration which is sort of period pieces like that um, and then kind of moving into something more, more modern. That is cool. <laughs> so for like music collaborations, do you have an ideal music collaboration you would like to fulfill within the next few years? <gasps> within the next few years? Hmm. There's so many. I think in general, I've never actually put out a proper collaboration. Um, uh, quite a lot of about right now because um, I really want to put out a collaboration. I think my dream collaboration, uh, even if it's not like a proper duet, would be with Ed Sheeran because I think he... I love his story, his storytelling and his songwriting. And I think he was really the first person I ever listened to where I heard like both he and Taylor Swift, just like they're true storytellers through song, but they're doing it in a very sort of pop way. And uh, so if I ever got to just, it doesn't have to be a duet, it can be anything. If I just got to be in the room. <laughs> while, you know, uh, writing a song with Ed Sheeran, I would be, I think that would be like life made. <laughs> so with Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, 
What are your favorite songs from them? Oh my goodness. Oh, this is good. There's so many. Um, <laughs> Taylor Swift. I mean, there's so many. I love I love most Taylor Swift songs, so it's just that's just kind of a fact. Um, I would say I actually love "Delicate" from Reputation. I think it's such a beautiful song. I love um, the man from Lover. The best day has a very special place in my heart because it was the first song I ever learned how to play and I played it for my mom and she cried. <laughs> it was sweet. Um, Ed Sheeran, oh man. Basically his whole first album, I just think is incredible. I love the A-Team. I love Small Bump. I love uh, just so, so, many, so many songs of his. What is your favorite instrument to play? That's tricky. I go back and forth. I actually, I think I feel like I have an actual answer to this. Um, but I don't, I think it's either, I mean, guitar and piano are really the ones I play. I think, uh, I think I'll have to, okay, let's, let's answer your question for real. Because <laughs> I'll just say both. I think it's guitar because, you know, it's really where I started writing my own music and where I sort of found my voice. And I think it's just a very sacred place for me as an artist to pick up this instrument. And you're also kind of like holding it close to you. And um, I think there's something really special about that. I think piano is also amazing. Um, but I, if, I, if I had to pick, it would be guitar. I feel like pianos are a harder instrument to like take with you wherever you go. Right, right. It's a keyboard environment. It's hard to move it around different places. Yes, it's still even the keyboards. It's like this is a lot of effort where you can just pick up a guitar. But that's so yeah. cool. You play the keyboards. I play piano and I play guitar. Oh, that's amazing! Oh my goodness, are you a songwriter? No. No. <laughs> well, not yet. At least I've got lots of writer's block. You do? Oh, well, I will be thinking of you because I've been there, been there, been there. <laughs> what is your favorite song to play on the guitar? Actually, this is funny. Um, yesterday, someone asked me um, what, you know, what was, what the, if I just say play a song on guitar, what's the first song you play? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's always um, You're My Sunshine. I think that's like a children's song. I don't know where it's or like it, it originally. I think it is. Is it a children's song? Yeah. I don't know if my player, I think my parents probably sang that to me quite a bit. Um, but I love, I love that song. It's so beautiful. And um, I like to play it very like in a very sad way <laughs> or sound, sad sounding way. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> what is your go-to song to play on the piano? My go-to song to play on the piano is, hmm, honestly, I learned how to play um, Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2 on the piano this uh, past year. I did a cover of it, and, uh, and I think it's just been kind of what I go to when I sit down uh, to play, just because I think... I learned it and I think it's really pretty um, and, and it's just making a really powerful statement. So I love that song. I feel like when you play like guitar, it's like super easy to play because you kind of just know where everything is. But then when you play piano, you have to like make sure your hands are in the right spot. Yes, exactly. It's like, there's so many, the piano, there are so many different possibilities. It's kind of overwhelming. You really got to know what you're doing. <laughs> So I love that you that you play piano too. But I think it I think it helps with guitar though. I think there is some kind of like symbiotic relationship going on between the two. <laughs> what is your least favorite chord on piano and guitar? Oh, my least favorite chord is um ooh, this is a good question. Uh, 
I don't know the exact uh, like musical note or chord, but I did have someone show me once how to play like basically how to play, you know, when you hear an ambulance, <laughs> that is a chord that is Wait, coming really? out of it. Yes. And I'm sorry that I don't, oh, I'm sorry. There's like something happening. Um, I don't know the actual, um, the actual chord. And I'm sorry about that. I should know that. I'm going to look it up after this, but it is a chord. And um, he played it and I was like, that's so, it's just disturbing. I guess the, the point of an ambulance is to disturb the piece because, you know, it's coming through and it's an emergency. So uh, it's effective, but it's just a, not a great sound. <laughs> that is actually really cool. I never knew that. Yeah, there's someone apparently who, someone's job is apparently, like apparently to come up with those chords or like, oh. I don't know. I mean, he was telling that me about it. really weird. I know. I'm like, wow, this is so interesting. <laughs> I don't like playing bar chords. They annoy me. Oh, those are really hard. I also really struggle with bar chords. <laughs> I really do. I this. I really like these chords, but kind of, um, they're sort of like, I don't know if they're proper chords, but this on guitar, the sort of walk down and walk mm -hmm. up. Of course, I really love them. They're very difficult for me, but I love when I, you know, can play one of those because it really adds, I think, emphasis to, to what you're playing. <laughs> How long did it take you to learn the instruments that you play? Hmm. I would say it, it took me a solid, a solid four months to play four chords properly, um, kind of in a row <laughs> without like messing up. Um, and so I would say, I, you know, piano is a little bit different because I used to take as a child, I would take piano lessons and um, I stopped those when I was 10 and I don't know why I did. I regret that now, <laughs> um, but I, I guess I sort of started to learn how to play piano then, um, but then I came back to it later and kind of learned it more from a chord perspective. But, um, but yeah, I, I would say about four months. And I would also say that I'm still learning. You know, I, I haven't had any kind of proper, other than those three years when I was a kid um, of piano lessons, I haven't had any sort of proper training. So I, I feel like I'm always kind of learning the instruments and learning new ways to play them. And there's so many different ways to play chords on guitar and piano as well, but um, I'm really fascinated by the different ways to play on, on guitar. I feel like with like piano, you have to like learn how to play both hands at the same time. And it just moves your brain like crazy because I took a break from piano and I think it was like a year and then I came yeah. back and now I can't play with both hands anymore. It, it is. It is. I remember when I first started learning how to play with both hands and it, it really does kind of explode your brain. It's a lot of information. Um, I remember being like so overwhelmed by it. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I think it's so cool. And I think it's so cool that you have that experience too. It just shows how, you know, intricate uh, music is. <laughs> so is there a piece of advice that someone has given you that has helped you with your career? Mm, yes, yes, yes. Um, Brandi Carlisle, who she's kind of a folk Americana um, country artist. But she, I was on tour with her and I was kind of telling her because at the time I was sort of making music that was similar to hers. And um, I told her, I was like, I really want to go into the pop. I want to write pop music. And um, she was very supportive of that. And she just said, but there was a but. She was like, just to make sure the song can stand on its own. Like, don't let the production take over because you're a songwriter and that's what, that's your strength. And I think that has stayed with me 
so much over the years in my own songwriting and songs that I write collaboratively with other songwriters. It's like the production will, will fall in line for when I'm writing my own music, like it will, you know, make itself apparent, but the song is what matters, the actual chords, the melody. Um, so that, I think that's really helped me in my writing. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully you hear it when you listen to my music, that like, this is the song. Um, and then the other thing she said to me at a different time, much later, <laughs> um, I saw her um, at a, she, we um, met at a Grammy party again. She was nominated um, for a bunch of Grammys and um, for her album, by the way, I forgive you. And I saw her and it was like, oh, hi again. It was been a long time. And she said, she looked at me and she said, um, she told me how old she was. And she was like, you got to stick it out too. You got to stick it out for as long as you possibly can. Don't ever let anyone tell you it's too late um, or that you're not good enough. Um, you know, just keep going no matter what. And I think um, that's really stayed with me as well as I continue to grow and, um, get older and and all that. I think it's it's exciting to think about the possibilities of what can be. So as you're getting all these different advice, do you have advice for people who are starting out in music? Yes, I would say first of all, and I I actually need to credit my friend um, Jensen McRae. She's a fellow artist um, with this, but she was asked this question on on something we did together on a Zoom performance, and she said, first thing is decide if you really want it. Um, she said, you know, there is this sort of like, I think this is totally true, the sort of glamorous, um, the glamorized way of viewing this job, and there are a lot of amazing things that we, you, know, you get to do, um, and part of that is real, playing playing shows and all things, but, um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot, it really takes over your whole life. <laughs> and uh, that's a big, that's a big sacrifice and it affects kind of, you know, when you're on the road, it affects your family relationships and your friend relationships. And um, I thought it was really smart and wise of her to say, like, really decide if this is something you want. And I remember when my dad looked at me, it was after my first tour and he said, you have to decide if this is it, because this is a lot, <laughs> you know, this is just a lot. Uh, so I would say really decide. And then I would say, write as much as you can, even if it's not perfect, even if, it, if you don't think it's good. Um, it doesn't matter what you think. It's just what matters is constantly like engaging with that creative flow and saying, yes, I'm a creative human being because all human beings are, and, um, and the songs will flow. And then the last bit would be to play shows, you know, to play shows and uh, when it's safe. <laughs> when we're we're um, at a time when we can do that again, everywhere, anywhere, anywhere that is possible for you to, to play and have your voice heard. I think there's nothing, the internet is so great, and I believe in TikTok, I believe in all these amazing ways to get your music out there, but I think the power is really in um, the live kind of in-person thing. So that's my advice. What is the hardest thing about being in the music industry and having that spotlight? Mm. I would say, I think for me, I can only answer for myself. I think, I think the hardest thing about being in, in the music industry is I'm trying to, you know, I want my music out there, right? And so I'm trying to meet people who will join in that endeavor with me. And I think it's very easy for someone like myself, I mentioned I'm a people pleaser, um, to just sort of want to do what other people in the industry want me to do. And I've really had to grow in this area and just say, this is my artistic conviction. It's actually a lot of what happened with the Tell Me I'm Pretty video. I was like, 
um, and there wasn't anyone in particular, but I think there was just sort of this idea of what it, it should be. And I remember just say, thinking, I have specific ideas about I, what I want this to be. And, and I think, um, you know, whenever an artist does that, it only good things can come from it. I, I'm going to tell a story about Dolly Parton. Um, I don't know if you know the story, but she had the song, I Will Always Love You. She wrote that song. And um, Elvis came to her one day, Elvis, and said, <laughs> I want to cut that song. I want to sing that song. And she told Dolly Parton, she told him no. <laughs> and he was the king of rock and roll. He was everything. He was, you know, I think the equivalent right now would be like Taylor Swift saying, I want to cut your song or Ariana Grande or something like that. And she said, absolutely not. And uh, then because she said that, because she felt that conviction, we now have the Whitney Houston version of, and which is like arguably the, the only version of the song. And I think, um, that just has been really inspiring to me of like, no matter what the opportunity is, no matter how glossy or kind of in the spotlight it is, always, always check in with your, with your pure artistic gut, because that's what's going to, I think, change the world. <laughs> As you continue to write music, where do you see yourself in the next five years? <sighs> hopefully releasing an album within the next five years <laughs> um, or two, an album or two. Um, I think that would be number one. And then number two would just be getting back out on the road and doing my own tour. Um, yeah, I think those are the two kind of priorities for me. So with touring, what is like one major thing that you can take away from being on any tour that you've been on and applying it to your life? Ooh. So when you're on tour, my favorite thing about tour is that there's a set schedule every day. You know exactly what you're doing. So you wake up, you get ready, you do their sort of like tour things to do, whether it's meeting fans or um, going to radio stations or whatever, it can be anything uh, like that. But it's just, there's things to do and then get back to the venue, um, maybe do a little workout, <laughs> eat some food, and then you're getting ready for, for the show. And then it just repeats the next day in a new city. And I think, um, I love that because I'm, I'm a person who really, I think this is why I love being in school. Um, I really love having a set schedule and sort of having that kind of um, already like established uh, rhythm. I think, and this is what I've really been thinking about right now, especially with the pandemic, when I have to sort of create my own schedule and hold myself accountable to things. Um, that's really difficult for me because I'm just like, I'm an overthinker and I'm, I'm an, I just sort of won't start things because I'm afraid there's so many things to do. So I think I've really tried to take that sort of, okay, I thrive and feel better, even just from a mental health perspective, when I have these sort of set times for things like on the road. So I've tried to implement that with my life. <laughs> I'm doing it, still doing it today. <laughs> I feel like when you're on tour, like you said, you had a set schedule. Does it ever get boring doing the same exact things over and over? No, I would say no, not boring. I think it might get tiring. I think there is a point, especially in longer tours, where you sort of reach, you're like, okay, I need to go sleep for like three days <laughs> and then come back. But um, never boring. I think the touring is the coolest thing in the world because it's getting to see different places and, and be in a new city every day. And I don't think there's any way that that could be boring. And you're getting to play music and meeting people. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite place you've been to on tour? Oh, that's, that's a really hard one. There's lots of places. I will say. We have some 
some folks from Canada on. So I have to say Toronto, Montreal, it's just, I'd never been to Canada before um, I started touring. And so that was really fun for me to, to play a show in a different country. Um, and I spoke a little, I don't, so I wouldn't say I speak French now, but I spoke a little bit French when I first uh, went to Montreal. So it was kind of fun to go around and speak a different language and engage with different, with different things. So, yeah. When you're performing, what is your favorite song to perform? Oh, my favorite song to perform, I think on the last tour, because I really haven't toured since, um, mm -hmm. you know, playing, I haven't toured any of the new music, but I think um, my favorite song was Tongue Tied. Uh, and then I actually did start playing a new song called Letter to a Girl, uh, which is a song that I when I can say this here, is coming out, um, but I played it a few times, and no one knew the, the title of the song or anything, and um, I had a few experiences with that song where by the end of the song, at the last chorus, uh, the audience was singing along <laughs> with me, um, so that was really amazing, and I think, um, I think that'll be a favorite for me going forward as well. Have you ever forgotten lyrics to your songs when you're performing? All the time. <laughs> um, yes, it happens, honestly, definitely every tour, um, probably every week on tour <laughs> at some point. Um, but I, one experience stands out. I, I was playing, um, I had a, a, I was playing a sort of short acoustic set um, for an iHeartRadio event back in, I think, 2019. And uh, I was playing Tongue Tied. And I just, I think I just hadn't gotten enough sleep the night before. My brain was so foggy. And I could not remember the lyrics to the second verse at all. <laughs> and so instead of just sort of moving on or going to the chorus, I decided to go ahead and play the second verse and just make up new lyrics. <laughs> Sort of on the fly, um, and I think some of the lyrics were definitely. No, I'm talking about kind of. <laughs> I think um, one of the lines was, you know, you light me up electric, and I think I I started talking about how this this guy was like lighting up my brain, and <laughs> brain kind of became a um, a repeated lyric at that moment. So. <laughs> kind of embarrassing but also silly <laughs> one of the last questions i have is coming up with your ep what is one thing you're excited for uh, first thing just releasing music uh, after not doing that for quite some time uh, so just having having this music that i've worked really hard on out there um and i'm excited just to um get to connect with people through it. I think that's, I've said it, but it's my favorite thing about music is that it's, um, it's sort of a place where people gather and where people come together. And I think that's something that I, I think we all really need after this year, um, just not being able to be together in person. Um, so I think I'm just excited to be able to do that through my music and, Continue, just continue on. <laughs> thank you for doing this with me. I really oh, appreciate it. Thank you for doing it. This is awesome. This is like the highlight of my week, Caitlin. Thank you. You're an amazing interviewer. Your questions are were so good. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It should be up on my channel within the next week. Amazing. Amazing. I will keep you updated. Yes, please, please do. But I think I've followed you now, so I'm, I'll am i be in the know, which will be okay. great. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I had fun. Thank you. I'm glad you had fun. And keep keep playing. And, yeah, the writer's block thing is so real. I totally hear you. Yes, it will come. It will flow like a river. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.